okay, well, let's start uh, with the second part, building force on Guillermo's lecture, but focusing now more on the responsible innovation dimensions and also related questions, um, how to achieve responsible innovation and how to enact responsibility in the context of innovation processes in practice. Uh, first of all, I will provide a brief introduction of responsive innovation and different approaches and why it is actually important. And this contains, I will explain uh, five key dimensions of responsive innovation. And I will focus especially on the role of engaging with different stakeholders and the perspectives and needs and concerns that different stakeholders can bring in in the, in the context of the planning of innovation processes. And then we conclude with an interactive exercise where you will learn to develop a stakeholder map and a stakeholder engagement exercise specifically for your piece of research or specifically for the innovation you're working on. Um, just a second, please. Um, Okay. Okay. Now, research and innovation processes, they are often quite uncritically portrayed as a positive and necessary driver for progress and economic growth. And without any doubt, growth, employment, a well-functioning economy and the capacity to innovate are, are essential. But there's also the need for critical questions and a more critical evaluation and inquiry of innovation processes to make sure that research and innovation takes really place in a way that is safe, responsible, and socially robust and aligns with the needs and expectations of societies, including the grand challenges our world is currently and in the future facing. Now, if you think back, maybe over the last 20 or 30 years. The history of innovation, there have really been many examples where technological advancements and innovation has led to quite a few problematic consequences. Um, think for example about facial recognition technology. Now this is a technology that on, on the one hand increases individual and collective safety, but then on the other hand, it increases and reinforces uh, new possibilities for surveillance and restricts personal freedoms and is causing quite a few risks in that regard. So there's a clear dilemma existing here. And um, another example, you know, another challenge of many technological developments are premature applications. I think back, for instance, the deadly crash with a self-driving Uber car that happened when this car or this technology was in a testing phase and it was you know, insufficiently developed. But think also back about to the thalidomide scandal. So a promising medicine, which was quite insufficiently tested in the context of clinical trials, resulted in the 1960s in very severe birth defects in, in, you know, in thousands of children all across the world. Another issue is, if you think about the longer term consequences of innovation, I mean, one of the examples is that AI technology will benefit societies, but then media reports also provide many predictions that it might cause widespread unemployment and loss of labor opportunities in many countries. And we can expect that these inequalities will play out quite uh, differently in, in, in different parts of the world. You know, poorer countries might actually suffer more. We don't know exactly, but these are the questions one needs to explore. And then of course, there's also the challenge and the possibility of dual use and misuse of new innovations. Think about the de development of you know, harmful weapon systems, but also think about technologies such as a deep fake technology and the use for instance, in the context of media manipulation or political manipulation. And then, of course, there are the environmental effects of innovation. And in a way, you know, COP24 at this moment once again raises 
uh, alarming alarming comments and uh, conclusions about the, the the climate situation and the environmental impact of technological progress in this world. So it is essential to keep that in mind also also with regard to some of the technologies that are developed in the HPP. Another critical question is, of course, who will actually benefit from innovation processes and who has access to new technologies and, and invention? And often in a world that maybe is increasingly unequal, access to the possible advantages is likely to be quite unequal. And some, especially more wealthy segments of or, you know, national or global populations will benefit more compared to other economically more disenfranchised groups. This is not always the case, of course. There are many technologies that lift people out of poverty, but actually this, these are questions that need to be evaluated and assessed for each specific innovation or technology as it emerges. Or, and for some, for some innovations, this is, it is more important to consider these things, for instance, in the realm of medicine or medical research uh, than in, in other areas. Now, in some history has really shown that there are, are, are very good reasons to, to develop new innovations in a more prudent way, to reflect about the, the consequences and uh, to think about the responsibilities that researchers have with regard to society and the environment. Okay, but now to the idea and concept of responsible innovation or sometimes also responsible research and innovation. What is it? Why is it important? And how can ideas of responsible innovation implemented in the context of actual research and innovation practices? So responsible innovation is an action-oriented policy concept. It has emerged primarily in the last 15 years in the European Union and the USA. Uh, it has been adopted by the European Research Council in the Horizon 2020 research program. Um, it has become a little bit less influential in Horizon Europe, but there have been various European funding bodies that have adopted uh, principles of responsible innovation and they ha have asked researchers to take these into account and, and use these as a basis for reflection as their research or innovation progresses. Now, at a more global level, responsible innovation principles are quite heavily reflected in the UNESCO re recommendation on science and scientific researchers, um, which is a document that has been signed by, I think, 195 countries in uh, 2017. And Responsible innovation has also become something like an international movement. It has its own journals, for example, the, the Journal of Responsible Innovation or the, the Journal of Responsible Technology. It, it has its own consultants, responsible innovation consultants. There are specific responsible innovation accreditation procedures and also university, university courses. And also in industry, ideas and principle of, of responsible innovation have started to play a more prominent role and, and are adopted on and off at least, you know, not necessarily very consistent, but have also become more important and have been widely promoted. Okay. So in the next few minutes, I would like to introduce five key dimensions of responsible innovation and well, actually there, it would be possible to provide quite a few additional dimensions, but I have focused on these because I think they're especially important in the context of the focus of this module, which is also a training that uh, aims to provide an understanding of stakeholder engagement, why stakeholder engagement is an important part of responsive innovation and also how engagement with different stakeholders can be achieved in practice, and also how insights from stakeholder engagement can really be implemented uh, into, into the planning of innovation processes. So the first dimension is to anticipate risks and problematic impacts of innovation on societies and the environment. And I've already provided 
a number of um, examples why this is important. Um, a second dimension is to connect innovations with the needs and the values and expectations of society. Um, the need to really explore what are these needs, what are these values, um, what are these expectations, what do different societal groups think, how do they, what are the expectations with regard to specific innovation processes, and that relates to point three and four. Uh, on the one hand, a commitment to key societal values and principles. Now, these are often collectively defined principles that think about the human rights or we'll think about the Treaty of the European Union. Here we see a number of overarching values and principles that are codified. And uh, for instance, a commitment to, to democracy. And a fourth dimension is the facilitation of broad public dialogue and, and citizen engagement. And this is what we will focus upon in more detail a little later. And the fifth dimension is to integrate insights from the above into the design and planning of research and innovation processes. And I will explain that in a little bit more detail when we go through the next slides. Okay, I already spoke about the need to anticipate risks and problematic impacts of innovation, but there are nevertheless a number of questions that may help you to understand on which aspects to focus upon. You know, if you think about your own research or innovation processes or the innovations that might emerge from it, they could, it could be said, for instance, there could be possible environmental effects, there could be specific societal impacts, but there could also be possibly disruptive economic effects. And that is why this slide, it presents uh, three questions that uh, probe into each of these different aspects. So the first, the first question is, what are potential adverse effects and risks for the environment or also for human health as well as animal health? I think for instance, the high energy costs of uh, digital technologies, um, CO2 emissions, and how one can reduce these. But also think about what are the potential societal impacts, effects of AI on democracy or surveillance, for, for example, as already mentioned. But there is also a third category of, of disruptive effects or risks, and that is um, effects on the economy, because you know, some cutting edge innovation areas will affect traditional economic sectors, and these are likely to lose out. Now, maybe this is beneficial in the longer term, but at least in the shorter term, this can result in unemployment or in, in regional decline. So it is important to keep these questions in mind. Okay, so the second dimension, again, you may remember, was to connect innovation processes with the values, the needs, and expectations of societies. Now, this is really a, a key premise of responsive innovation. And um, what also has become more influential and important in, in recent years, especially, is that innovation and research processes should contribute to solutions to grant societal challenges such as climate change or the reduction of health inequalities or the realization of food security. Now, in order to achieve this, it is really important that innovators and firms continuously work together with a wide variety of stakeholders in society, you know, possible users, citizens, but also maybe NGOs, policymakers, and so on. Okay, now, in order to achieve some form of alignment with societal needs or expectations, there are two specific ways. The first is a more deductive process. That's, that is the idea to align innovation aims, for instance, you know, with more overarching uh, codes or codifications of values and principles, as I said previously, for example, the human rights. Now, I've uh, provided a number of examples here. This can, uh, so this can include a commitment to ensure diversity 
and inclusiveness, including gender equality, but it can also include a commitment to realize broad access to the benefits of innovation, as well as a commitment to research ethics and integrity, including the open sharing of data that was mentioned by Guillermo and protection of human rights, a commitment to sustain sustainability and environmental protection and, and so on. So you have these slides and I will send them to you. You can, you can read uh, this in detail. Um, the next point here, the, the fourth dimension of responsive innovation that I would highlight is the facilitation of broad public dialogue and citizen engagement. Now, this is more an inductive approach based on the idea, learning from the people, learning from different groups and everyone affected or involved in an innovation, innovation process. Now, public dialogue and engagement I would say are crucial to achieving the societal alignment of innovation, but also to understand maybe, you know, conflicts of interest or conflicting perspectives, as well as specific concerns on different groups and how to navigate between these. Um, public dialogue and engagement can involve co-creation and co-learning from citizens, lay people and diverse social groups, but it also includes the understanding of the gender dimensions of research and innovation processes, and maybe especially also the effects of innovation on, on gender relations, whether they create or prevent new possibilities of participation. Um, and then also the AC dimension to understand and address societal concerns and, and anxieties. Okay, come to the, to the last slide here. Um, so the fifth dimension that really includes to, to bring it all together, to integrate the insights from the anticipation of risk and effects and uh, to integrate the insights from a, a stakeholder deliberation and from a reflection on more overarching broad principles and values and to think now, how can these actually be integrated into the de design and the planning of research and innovation processes? And the aim here is really to actively influence the direction and the trajectory of research and innovation processes itself, as it has been defined in the area framework of the um, Engineering and Physical Science Research Council uh, or in the UK. Now, such integration can be achieved, for example, by adjusting research or innovation aims to specifically respond to identified societal challenges and needs, um, but also to prevent possible risks or negative future impacts, to be aware of them and, and think about measures in order to, to prevent them or at least to, to mitigate them, uh, or also measures to ensure research integrity and to comply with relevant ethical codes during the development, the testing, and also the rollout uh, in, the, in the market of a new technology or, or, or innovation. 